what's up everybody why'd you do that <laughs> what's up everybody welcome back to another 3d hangouts i'm noah Ruiz. i'm a designer here adafruit join me every week is my Dehy- pedro. not dehydrated hydrated, hydrated brother <laughs> good morning everybody pedro's creative tech here at adafruit and every week we're here to share 3d printed projects featuring electronics from adafruit that's right this is sure we combine 3d printing DIY electronics and some other things to make inspirational projects hello everybody hanging out in the discord chat room Good morning, to... good evening, good afternoon, good night to everybody hanging around all over the world. Giving shout outs to everybody hanging out in the Discord at discord.gg slash Adafruit. Come on by, join the, what is it, 23,000? Thousands of folks. Thank 32, you everybody 000? for tuning in live. We'll jump in throughout the show to if anybody has any questions or fun gifts. We love gifts. Good morning, Trevor Flowers. Good morning, Mike P. Jim okay. Hendrickson. Hanging out in the YouTube chat and Facebook as well. Come on by, say hi. Comments, questions will be answered there. Cool. I'm going to run through some housekeeping so we can get the show started. First up, um, ba, 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 ba. Let's pay some bills by heading over to adafruit.com slash free. You can find all the different freebies that are going on this week. We have a uh, half-size breadboard for orders that are $99 or more. For orders that are 149 or more, you get the half-size from Roberto, plus the STEM FUT, uh breakout board. If you have an account with Adafruit, we'll make sure you don't get the same one twice. Otherwise, it's going to be randomly selected. And for orders that are $200 or more, you'll get the STEM FUT breakout, the half-size from Roberto, and free ground shipping for UPS in the continental US only. So check out adafruit.com slash free as supplies last. And we're working on getting more things made, so hopefully we can add more stuff to the freebies. Next up, head over to jobs.adafruit.com for the latest job postings. There's some new ones this week from February. We have Arduino Uno R3 code composite. It seems like a remote gig. We have a director of Idea Lab. Check that one out. Firmware engineer for battery management stuff in the San Jose area. Lead hacker for a hacker club in the Vermont area. All cool things. So check it out at jobs.adafruit.com. Once a week, we have a newsletter that's focused on the products. Head on over to adafruit.com slash new new newsletter. Or, or just newsletter, sorry. <laughs> it's called the new new newsletter. adafruitdaily.com is where you can go to subscribe to different categories to get daily emails sent in your inbox. One of our favorite ones is the micro, uh, Python and Microcontroller's newsletter. Shout out to everybody for subscribing to that one. And big shout outs to Ann Barella for putting this together. I think that's going to do it for the housekeeping. Let's jump back over to the Discord. Just another announcement for Discord. <clears throat> More shout outs, everybody hanging Switching out, joining out, out. <laughs> Gary G. Hello. Kevin's Mac. Uh, Jalen. Kevin. McLear. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for all joining. Let's go ahead and jump into this week's. Sorry, <laughs> this clicky, week's project. Super clicky project. The Nintendo Switch. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so this was completely ripped off from Elgato's new <laughs> Stream yeah. Deck pedal. Why subtle for theirs when you can make your own? So a couple years ago, we made a foot pedal that has gathered some dust. I think it was made with the M zeros. If you want to show the that, yeah. trinket so a couple M0. years ago, what Circuit Python version two, we wanted to make a USB HID foot switch, and at the time, CircuitPython was brand new, brand, uh, right in development, so we were really happy to make this uh, little 3D printed foot switch. Um, it uses the Trinket M0. It's these two pieces that are printed. Um, you have these built-in hinges, and one of the things we found uh, is you actually don't need a spring for this style of thing. We found that these premium zippy switches, these micro switches, have really nice actuators um, that have built-in uh, spring mechanisms inside the button itself. So we figured we'd refresh this design for the Cutie Pie RP2040. Cutie Pie is our favorite kind of microcontroller that runs uh, CircuitPython. And you can still do this with the Trinket M0, it's just we wanted to use the Cutie Pie because those chips are readily available. Uh, so Pedro thought, you know what, since the release of the Elgato um, foot switch, why don't we make this into three switches? So he redesigned the, um, the case to make three separate switches here. So we have our Cutie Pie RP2040 right there with a little 3D printed plate that is a separate piece that gets uh, fastened with some screws here. So that way you have a modular uh, PCB plate so you can switch out the microcontroller. Let's say you want to use a Key B2040 or uh, an Arduino Nano or something like that. You could switch that out if you'd like. 
some additions that we we made is uh, we're, we're really big fans of AT Tech, AT Makers. Um, so we figured we'd put these three audio jacks, these TRS audio jacks. They're not for audio, they're for AT switches. So that's uh, that's how that's working there. So there is a micro switch uh, on the bottom of these three pads. Really, really easy to actuate them. No springs needed. And I don't think you need any supports either. Um, you're gonna need a, a 3D printer that has uh, a bed of about 300 millimeters or 10 inches. Um, but other than that, you can print this out and customize the design if you'd like as well. Yeah, really like how clicky it is. And I guess uh, the big revelation, re revelation was no springs. Well, that was one of the things that we kept seeing back in the feedback for the guide. People asking what was the sides for the springs. And yeah. there's so many that we, we just couldn't didn't note it. We had the, to uh, like get a whole kit and figure out which one it was. But in the end, it didn't even matter which yeah. one because there's already a spring inside the switch. So it just rests right on top. And we have a little pivot point on the bottom here. So if we go ahead and take a look inside, this guy here and just bend these guys and you can see the way that everything's laid out it just rests right on top here it pivots along these two extrusions and you have these little dimples that hold the uh what do we call these lids buttons in place so it just rotates around that with enough space to not have any grinding going on with the you know pla parts all grinding against each other I forget who uh, had mentioned that they had tried printing a foot switch before three printed one and it was just filament you know scraping. scraping against each other yeah you just need clearances between your mated surfaces yeah the dimples are clearance. at a 45 degree angle so they print without any supports um they're thick you can see here yeah they're super thick you have fillets and chamfers that are providing That's extra fine. strength like you were saying before you can switch out the uh, uh, microcontroller so you can use something like the key b 2040 if you want to swap this out and then all of the ports and everything line up perfectly you just got to print a separate little snap in holder and these are super easy to print out super fast so if you uh, want to switch these out for an available uh, board it's one of the things we have to do now in 2020 and the you know 2022 with component sh shortages we got to make sure that everything is swappable for a different available board so uh, same thing with the brackets that are holding the switches in place. Everything can be swapped out for a different one because I did notice these were out of stock. And then to make yeah. it even more modular, I think last time you actually had to solder to the, uh, to the little tabs on here. Yeah, the terminals. The terminals. So now that we have these uh, arcade quick connect uh, cables, much prefer using this method instead. Yeah, that's great. And then the other way too to make this even more modular too is uh, I don't think we stock these. Um, but I did build these female uh, quick connect cables. So if you want to swap this out, you're not having to drag around all of the switches or anything else that's connected to it. You can have this nice little female two male adapter and just connect that in there like that. Uh, the Cutie Pi itself, I did not bring one, has ample amount of connections even with the just their one ground connection that we have back here. You can actually use the castellated pads too. Can you focus on that? To actually yeah. connect two wires, you can connect two wires on the inside of the little pins and then one on the outside on the castellated part of that. So we have three ground connections to easily hook these up. And then what if, if we required more, one of the things I like doing is just having one wire out and then having that ground split off into many ones, but I didn't want to have the wiring be too complicated. Uh, enough room for these small TRS jacks to be mounted right next to each other. If you just want one, perfect. Three, no problem. You can even have three on, like on each side of these if you wanted to. And what else we talk about? I think that's pretty much it. The construction of this, like we were saying, is super happy with uh, not having to need any springs because as you can see, you have a nice amount of space on the base, but you uh, would definitely fill that up. Uh, the other thing too is that I like um, that we don't have to cut any of these wires. They can just loop around and look nice and elegant, nice packed away without having to have everything look like a nest. So again, the little it's dimples. <laughs> yeah. Again, the little dimples that it uh, pivots around. Very good accidental <laughs> way that we found that out that you don't require springs. Right. The original design, um, I had like a little holder for the spring and then I just realized uh, when I didn't have it in there and I was playing with it, like, oh, it doesn't really need it because like we said, this there's a spring has, in there. Uh, has a nice spring in it. 
a type of spring. I don't know if it's an exact coiled spring, but it's something in there. It can yeah. be just a metal uh, kind of thing. Kind of like how you see uh, the mechanical key switches from Terra Max, mm -hmm. kind of how they have like a metal uh, wire inside that kind of, that's probably what they have inside here. I haven't taken apart these switches, but probably a similar thing. Yeah, so Some of the things to accommodate when you're making these things is like the USB port has to have a really big port. So when you when you actually push it down, like you have to have enough room here for USB port. Uh, so this is the trinket. Yours is uh, the USB C connector, which I'm a huge fan of. Yes, that's actually why we had to switch this out. So um, if you don't need a three button switch, no, I did update it, and we have now compatible still with the uh, trinket, but now you can have the um, yeah the cutie pie. Cutie pie Pretty in there. similar design. Um, so let me crack it open here. You got your, you got your hinges with the dimples in there. Um, so let's just print without any supports. And then we have the same bracket here uh, for the for the zippy switch. Notice that it's mounted horizontally instead of vertically this way. Uh, Cutie pie bracket is right there. Got some screws in there with some nuts, just so that you can have a real nice secure fitting. And it's easy to take the PCB, the Cutie pie out of the PCB bracket because it has those snap fit corners. So it's easy to flex it open and bring it in and out if you need to. Um, other than that, uh, I have some fins here just so it prints uh, a little bit quicker. And then the top here, the top is kind of, it's got this weird shape, right? It's got a lot of these um, these surfaces that are angled and stuff. So the thing here is that you do need some support material. Oops, <laughs> but it actually ends up being okay because this surface is what gets printed with support material. It actually adds this nice rough texture. So if you're putting it, if your foot's touching it, you get a nice tactile feel and textured surface. Um, so a little bit of support material for this guy, but these days support material works out pretty well And this flat surface is what touches the bed. So it actually prints at, a, at an angle like that um, But yeah, that's the updated uh, Single button foot switch really really simple Still really really modular. We definitely recommend rubber feet at the bottom there Let's just stick on there. No need for screws or anything on that. Just metal feet. Peter's got a nice set over here they um, yeah, you can just flex this and uh, those those hinges fit into those dimples there and it pivots from there and no scraping, very little friction. Um, yeah, so it's probably even good like as a, as a kind of a game show buzzer. Like it's just a nice thing to kind of actuate. Mm -hmm. In the video, we tried to show our dog and a baby, other animals and things. Yeah, so we think that's a good uh, good method to do it without any springs. Quick question from Kevin's Mac asking, is the PLA sweaty foot proof? Funny that you mentioned that when you're talking about the vented looking one. Oh, you can actually funny, yeah. stick a fan inside there and have yeah. it vent off. Right. Cool down your feet. So that's a nice little modification that's that you funny. can do to that one or even this one. Have yeah, a little fan is, inside there. This is a little bit smaller. I just made it bigger because I feel like... I figure it, you know, it just needs to be wind out for those, um, for these tabs here on the uh, on the PCBs. Um, but yeah, pretty similar design. So yeah, let's take a look at the learn guide. Uh, real quick, Rolves is asking: Were the TRS uh, ports was it drilled in? No, it is part of the design. Yeah, they're just and you holes. You can see the, the uh, um, diameter for the sketches. You can move these around. You go can ahead, have take them one out. There's a hex nut. You just unscrew the hex nut. They're panel mounted. Panel mounts was really easy to do, um, which is nice. See if I can get this with my finger. Yeah, I don't have a, uh, a wrench. No, I got it. Okay, so cool. these come so these are out. great little TRS jacks. Um, they're really, really thin. They're like made out of brass or something, something nice. And the um, the the legs are labeled with uh, some pins. Yeah, so these fit uh, in. They just Obviously fit in. the opposite way, but you can see the okay. uh, tolerances are just big enough to fit that yeah. through. There's a threaded, uh, you know. These are threaded for yeah. the little washer there. Or the nut. Yeah, but they do TRS, so it can do stereo, mm -hmm. mono. Yep. And in this case, we're using it to just do an AT switch. AT switch. We have one in the other room, but it's just a a mono, a, a very low force um, switch mm -hmm. that that has a, a mono jack. Yeah, it's kind of a standard thing in the AT world. Not these. Um, it has like a mono, but you can yeah. see the clearance between all of the jacks here. It's what that looks like. Cool. And then this is a good way to adapt a, an existing switch for AT uh, for this. Mm -hmm. What's cool is that you can have like the caretaker, that caretaker who has the ability to activate the or actuate the switches along with the uh, patient. Okay. So a nice little way to have like a dual 
uh, usage that way. And uh, I think, yeah, let's go ahead and jump into the guide, take a look how this is constructed, all the files and links on all of that. Let me go ahead and get ready to post that. Yep. The on link. the overview page, you can see um, all the parts that are used in the project. Right now we're out of stock on these micro switches, but you can get them on Amazon if you just search for a micro switch. Um, some of them come with different little bits that you might have to chop off, like those um, those angled crate. I had to do that with mine. They have these uh, these things in them. Wait, wait, what things? Um, so, so we don't have these in stock, but if you buy them on Amazon, I was able to find one of these guys. See that red thing? Mm -hmm. See it's red. It's different. Yeah, I was gonna mention. It's a different switch. It, they come with these like metal levers oh. and you just rip that oh, off okay. so just rip off your lever um, we also sell these with levers yeah. maybe you could buy that one and rip off the the thing i haven't tried that but just the word is advice um, some of them come with levers and you don't really need it in this project so lots of micro switches out there in the world of uh you know amazon but and again the whole reason why we have it connected through a bracket is if whatever micro switch you do uh, manage to get if there are differences yeah, they, in the mounting holes you can no, just update the bracket actually, yeah there's these these um micro switches come in lots of different flavors but i found that the mounting holes tend to be consistent which is really great oh. so a lot of these come with just different um force like they, they have different ah, rating of newton yeah, yeah. force like how much force does it take to actuate it there's a little diagram there I mean, just a reference uh, but yeah look at all these different zippy switches right Hmm. Some of them, a lot hmm. of them that I found on Amazon have this little lever. You That's the lever you're off. talking about. Yeah, you okay. just rip that off. No, no worries. I can't remember where I. Th I remember doing that exact same thing, right? And just rip off yeah, a lever. Just rip it off. Yes. You see the the mounting holes are the exact same, and uh, hmm. yeah. Yep, twenty two point two. That's there where I saw go. it. The MIDI guitar. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, we used it in the MIDI guitar um, as the switch for the um, for the strumming. Yeah, so you can get these out. The the one without this the the thing we just we, we bought a lot of them so you know you can get them uh, when they come back in stock or fashion your own using one of these yeah however um, the cutie pie is in stock which is great Love the, the KB twenty forty is in stock as well yeah these arcade buttons these are the lifesavers right here look at this they even show it in the photo Bam. Here. yeah right so in. these are these little uh, tabs can be pulled on and off. I mean, uh, attached, and you can rip them off if you want. Um, probably be careful doing that, though, because you get a pretty nice tight fitting. And these uh, JST are a little bit different. They're JST 2.5 millimeter, yeah. so they're different than like the battery connectors, but they're gonna work with um, with some other things, yeah. like uh, the arcade uh, stem on board, for example. Uh, but in this case, you're, you kind of fashioned your own. Do we have any female connectors? I don't believe we do. No, we don't. Here we go. Here, here, you can create your own kit. using this kit. Um, these are adaptable. They come with the female. See that female mm -hmm. one? So you would just wire into those. Um, but yeah, it's the X, JST XH 2.5 millimeter pitch. The and two pin. You can, yeah, so you can make your own uh, female wire with this kit. Whoa. Yeah, we're stepping into the weeds here with, uh, with that. I think the kit we have has uh, different colors too, so I went with the red, <laughs> just so you could take a, tell it apart from the base. Okay. Um, yeah, that's a main note of, uh, of the parts. All right, next up we'll go over to the circuit diagram. Each pin gets wired to uh, one of the, um, the digital pins or the analog pins. In this case, it's using uh, uh, one, two, and three, I believe. Mm -hmm. So you can check that out. The, um, the zippy switch itself has labels on it. You want to connect it to your common ground and normally open. So normally open switch, that way when you actuate it, it closes. So that's what you want to use. In the circuit diagram page, or the, the circuit Python page, just walks you through installing the latest version of circuit Python onto your RP2040 cutie pie. Really simple to get it into the bootloader mode. Just drag and drop a UF2 file to install the latest version of circuit Python. Pretty straightforward. The code is hosted on GitHub. You can check it out. It's um, it's kind of just a modified example code, particular to the pins on this board and you know the keys. Uh, but this is instead of using the key codes from the USB HID library, it's using the consumer controls from the HID library, which allows you to do um, media controls, so play, pause, volume, brightness, that sort of thing is. Uh, 
is what's mapped to the to the buttons. So that's what we're using it for, just to kind of be like a, a music player thing. Um, so you can customize this and check out um, the uh, the read the docs link here. This one shows you all of the available. It's kind of like a cheat sheet for all the available key codes and consumer controls. There's also some some mouse um, things that you can do, like mouse click, right click, that sort of thing. And movements. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And this just shows you. A, I'm looking for the list. Some around here. Hmm. I forget what the list is. The list is somewhere. Of uh, uh, of all the available commands. Yeah, I think over here, key code API reference. Yeah, here's all the key codes. So you can look through all them, all the F function keys, forward Shoot. keys. Uh, there's some keypad specific things like you know equals and backspaces and space bars, all those things you can do. And there's some examples there. You can also do some ASCII-driven stuff. Yeah, so all the documentation there, and you can take there's a look so at that keys. if you want some specific key commands. Cool. So that's uh, the, 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 the code in a nutshell. Let's check out the printing page. No supports, right, for anything on this one anyway? Page Sorry, I'm like glued yeah, onto yeah. this. Uh, so there's the just Discord. some STLs you can download. <clears throat> Um, anything else? Yeah, so it's going to take, I uh, think, about five hours for the base, and the um, each button will take about an hour, and then the middle button will take about two hours. And uh, there's nothing special, no uh, support material or anything like that, just whatever your preferred PLA settings should do just fine. Uh, same thing with the infill. I don't believe there's any infill. It's all uh, top and bottom shells, so it should be good to go with that. Okay, you're gonna need a big printer. I think I said that at the beginning, I, 10 inch. I think it's about, yeah, 10 inches or like two, two, 220, 230 no, millimeters. That's like 260. There you go, 260 like millimeters. Yeah, so that's just what it is because it's a big thing. Yeah, 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 I was trying to- it off I was, the Elgato. Exactly, yeah. Um, this should be like big enough, like the middle uh, space bar, or middle bar should be like as big as, as wide as like a you know normal foot, I would think, with just a little bit spacing on each side. And then uh, these are a little bit taller, so you can um, detect which one you're about to push uh, as you're just uh, feeling with your foot around, you can, like feel the the shape of the buttons. Um, so yeah, it should be big enough just for the foot and uh, not as wide like the Stream Deck one. So that is the only uh, modification to the, the design that I did. Uh, all files are there. You can go in there and actually edit any of the shapes that you want so you can have a different looking layout. Add as many brackets or uh, switches as you want. Okay. Cool. We're down to the assembly like you were saying before. Super easy to attach the brackets. You're just going to need an M3 by 16 millimeter long screw. Uh, two of those guys to insert it. You want to hook up your arcade quick connect buttons uh, first before you mount it onto the main base with the additional M3 uh, five millimeter long screws and uh, are gonna uh, probably suggest doing the metal ones, the uh, nylon ones uh, might melt or something like as you're uh, tapping them and screwing it in. I do have a little bit, little bit of tolerance to the uh, mounting holes just so you can, uh, the screws will be able to bite into it. Uh, like we were saying earlier before, the uh, ground pads, uh, you should have enough room to solder three of those together and uh, all of the pins, it's just uh, A1 through A3 for your connections. Cool. Uh, nice little way the, uh, how the uh, boards snap into that. I think you've shown this enough. Uh, it's just super satisfying to see how they just press fit right into the walls. We're just showing the uh, KB2040 here. And yeah, it just press fits in there. You have like a nice little, uh, it's sunken in here. So it has enough room for any connections that you might make on there. And then a uh, nice little out to the bottom there. Yay. So mm -hmm. super simple to snap that in with all of your little cutouts for your Stemma connection and your USB. Nice. Moving on over to actually mounting that on there. Uh, it should line up to the USB port and then you can mount all of your other switches and of course your TRS audio jacks if you are going that route. 
If you're not going to need it, you can obviously edit the uh, the base file and just knock out those holes if you don't need them. Cool. Next up, like we were saying, uh, we were saying earlier, the way that these um, little divots push into the little extrusions there, and then they just pivot along that. You have enough, or the um, the base is thin enough. I'll just grab this one so I don't take it apart again. It's just 1.5 millimeters thick, so it does have. Yeah, there's some flex there. Some flexibility. So you can flex these in, so you can have more room yeah. to push in the center one. Same thing here. Same no. thing on these. They flex just a little bit. Mm -hmm. So they flex in and out, so you can attach your little divots. Yeah. I'm only going to do it maybe once or twice, so yeah. you're not going to be doing it. You're not going to be taking it apart all I mean, the time. I mean, we are, but <laughs> for right. showing it off. <laughs> yeah, just showing that the strength of the, um, the PLA, which we are using that glittery PLA from uh, everyone. Yep. And that's pretty that's much a, it. That's As you, rubber feet. <laughs> that's rubber feet. You're going to need uh, two sets of these, unfortunately. Uh, I did have it with just four feet on there, but the center, you know, it's so long that it will uh, deform every time you push down on it. Yeah. So add those two extra feet in the middle, and you should be set. Cool. That's, that's pretty much pretty it. That's pretty simple build. Yeah, nice remarkably simple. The longest thing is going to be the printing, because like I was saying before, what is it, five to six hours? Seven, eight, nine, ten, another twelve. A day of printing. <laughs> yeah, about a day of printing. <laughs> yeah, each one of these take about uh, two hours and a half mm -hmm. to print. The the single switch one. So even still, it's it's still gonna take time. And then as you can That's see here, we do have this. that texture on here from the PEI texture powder coated texture mm. um, plate. So definitely recommend using that. Otherwise, it'll look nice and matte. sort of slippery. So definitely want to go with a texture feel. Yeah. Uh, the other thing you can do if you do, uh, if you don't have the powder coated and you can only print something that's uh, nice and smooth, vinyl. You can add some vinyl decals yeah. on there. Uh, I don't think it'll stick as good to the as good to the textured uh, right. surface, but the um, glass and PEI just should stick perfectly. Cool. And I think that is it. Nice little simple build. Super useful. Um, and a nice way to update uh, one of the past projects with uh, something, you know, the Elgato did really good with their marketing. Like, oh my God, yeah. a foot switch? I never thought of a foot switch with three <laughs> buttons. <laughs> so definitely uh, uh, shout out to them for coming out with a really good product. Cool. So check out the guide if you want to download the files. Um, Post yeah, if you want to remix it, you can also remix it on any of the um, repo sites. Yeah. The. Um, the step files, Fusion 360 files, all there. Maybe add some cool, uh, what is it, the lattice structures for some cool um, generative uh, little textures on it. That'd be cool. All right. And that's this week's project. All right. Um, cool. You want to jump into what are you prototyping? All right. Let's go ahead and jump into what are we prototyping? Okay. Is it me, you? Who's up? Oh. Yeah, we got the party parrot. This is a Zotrope using the cricket and a motor. We got some 3D printed parts to make everything kind of work together. Um, let me turn it on real quick. You're gonna hear a little bit maybe of the motor going on. This is on off switch, there it is. Mm. The lighting's a little bit difficult here, but the, um, the latest is that it uses the photo interrupter sensor to, um, to track which frame it's on. Wow. So the um, there's an encoder ring on the cover of the acrylic, and that encoder ring is passing through the photo interrupter. So every time the ring rotates, it knows that it's moving a frame because there's a notch. So that's how it's able to change the colors using the photo interrupter to, to advance the colors. So it steps through a rainbow color here. Uh, again, it's it's very difficult to kind of see with the lighting and everything here, but um, it looks really great in, in in person. And because it's acrylic, you're going to run into things like reflections from the windows and whatnot. But the effect is is, is pretty good here, I think. Uh, I'm trying to fix the uh, I don't know the exposure. It's very difficult, as you can see. It, it's very hard, but the effect is kind of there. It, it's so the party parrot is 10 frames. Each frame has been etched on a piece of acrylic. The acrylic is, can be laser cut, can be CNC milled, um, and it's just a kind of a cool way to kind of show a zotrope 
with this edge lit acrylic. It, it, it looks pretty cool. Um, and the Cricut, the Adafruit Cricut, uh, has the feather there and it just makes adding NeoPixels, adding a motor, adding a sensor, all really easy plug and play. So everything's just connected um, to, the, to the screw block terminals and just there's header pins that connect uh, to the digital pins there and the Cricut's just a great little platform for doing these type of experiments where you want to have a, have a motor running, you need your motor driver, you need all this other crap. This The Cricut has everything built in so you have your NeoPixel driver, your motor driver, your your um, all the things that you need really. Mm -hmm. So really, really cool. Uh, Liz, Liz put together the code for this one. It's all done in Circuit Python. And everything's 3D printed. Uh, the gear, the gears are all 3D printed. There's there's a couple of hardware screws throughout the thing, but there's no like bearings or anything. It's all just working with the 3D printed uh, bit. Um, there's no friction too because we added a little bit of grease to the uh, to the track. But yeah, let's uh, turn it off. It's a built-in on-off switch. I'm powering it by this adjustable power supply here. We really recommend these power supplies. It goes from five volts to 24 volts. You can adjust it. I think it's got like two amps or so, but that's what you need. You need at least five volts and two amps to power your Cricut and your Feather at the same time, just with one powered DC jack. Um, let's see if we can wrap around here. So this is gonna be next week's project, so we'll have way more stuff, but just real quick, I wanted to show you. This is the encoder ring, so you see that notch there? That notch passes through uh, the photo interrupter, so this is the T-slot photo interrupter, and there's an IR LED in there, and every time it breaks the beam, that's how it tracks it. Uh, the motor here is just your toy DC motor. It's a TT motor. Uh, it's just grounded voltage. It's a 5 volt motor. This is a 3D printed gear that just press fits over there. And then inside the ring, um, the kind of holder for the acrylic has another uh, gear here. It's kind of like a herringbone style gear, and uh, all the all the acrylic just get press fitted into these little slots on the top cover. Um, but yeah, the base here, all it does is it really holds the the, um, the, the motor, and then this is uh, the cover that um, that's kind of the the rail, right? And then there is a little lip here, and this lip is what's sliding inside of this groove inside that top cover. That's really it, and that's really kind of how it works. Um, as long as you kind of add a little bit of grease to the uh, to the rail and the groove, um, it works pretty well. You just kind of have to adjust it to, to for the gears to meet, and they come, once they engage, then you're, you're ready to to try it out. <laughs> So that's a quick look at the prototype. Um, we're like I said, next week's project, Mr. Learn Guide. Um, Party Parrot. <laughs> you would like. Cool. Again, it's hard to film acrylic. It's, it's hard to film acrylic and lights. Let's film lights with acrylic. <laughs> what a great thing. <laughs> There's all the reflections. You get to do all these bounce cards to block out all of the reflections. Yeah, that's why we kind of fashioned this uh, this little thing here because without gonna have it, to... you're just going to see right through it. It's like, uh, where did it go? We're going to have to make a bigger one. <laughs> yeah, we're going to make a bigger one here. Um, but yeah, there's... Uh... There's some fun things you can do with it, right? Oh, I should Bit have been charging experiment. my thing for the next prototype. <laughs> oh, right. So well, I can take any questions if anybody has any. Uh, let's see. So trip stuff. The... Yeah, somebody was asking a really quick drone-related question on their power bank cutting in and off. Okay. You know, like how sometimes you'll plug in a thing and uh, into the power bank and then like it shuts off after a little bit. Mm -hmm. Just asking how to keep the power going. I think that's... I'm not sure. Um, some of our batteries are just built that way. Oh, yeah, you just right. have to get a new battery that bank that like, supports. It. Yeah, you just yeah, get yeah, a new battery, yeah. which is a bad thing to say. But um, I, we can link to one that we use when we have to. Yeah, uh, like keep the twenty-two hundred on. ones, the blue lipstick ones. Mm -hmm. Those tend to run well. But then, like some of the white battery banks that we sell, those don't. Those tend to shut off as you're like trying mm -hmm. to record something. <laughs> so the blue ones are really nice. 
I don't have that link. I don't have that. Um, I'm bringing it up right now. This one, right? The little lipstick one. Yeah, yeah, that's the best one. Let's see for the drone project. Try that one there. That's the one we use when we need to, uh, or when we run into that problem. Yeah, these battery banks are, are good. They uh, tend to run at low voltages. So keep running at low voltages. And there was another one. I think it's this one that doesn't. Mm. Right, it's like one of these white ones that don't uh, doesn't stay on. Doesn't stay on for like a NeoPixel project, which is a bummer. Any hoodle, good question. All right, cool. I think this has been charging. Next up on the prototyping, I don't know where Phil found this, but it was like, oh, check out this cool like glowy. Uh, yeah, it's I don't like know what it is. It's, it's like on Etsy. Yeah, it's like a jewelry accessory thing, and right. one Stop of it. the. Um, suggestions that the seller was saying was like zipper pulls. Sure. So right. it's using the glow in the dark uh, pigment filament with a what they used was like a CNC uh, little container for it. So of course okay. we're gonna three D print a little container for it okay. and then turn it into something that could be a wearable. Uh, one of the easiest things with this shape is a uh, like a little zipper pull. So have this attached to a zipper pull with the. Um, I think it's like the industrial grade okay. glow in the dark stuff that's in there. All right, so this is a vial that you can buy from an art store. Okay, the vial is. I'm about to pop you it. You can out. buy a bunch of vials. It's transparent. We're not going to 3D print a transparent thingy because it's not going to look as transparent. So uh, you can find a bunch of these vials that are plastic and they have like these little cork things. So the thing is that you have this powder and you can and it's a uh, fluorescent powder. Here's the vial. You get it at an arts and craft store. And uh, where's your purple light? So uh, you get this really cool glowy thing without having to use an LED or a battery. It just glows at night. So our 3D printed add-on just There's creates a nice covering, a nice sleeve, a nice dress shirt for your jewelry or accessories. So one of the first thoughts I had was, well, we have glow-in-the-dark filament. Why don't we use that? But again, that's not you know 100% of just the uh, luminescent pigment. Uh, you're like mixing it with the PLA and whatever additives that they have on here. So this is just the glow in the dark stuff. So it uh, is able to charge a lot more better and keep its glow longer than you know the glow in the dark PLA could. Yeah. And obviously we're uh, you doing the UV light here because uh, the sun is uh, not shining today. Right. But it, it has a really nice effect to it. It lights up a room in the dark. <laughs> That's how good this stuff is. But yeah. It's a nice little wearable project. Uh, it's still nice and cold out, so everybody has their hoodies on if you want to customize right. it. Cool for uh, props as well. We're trying yeah, to there were some other jewelry here. Yeah, there were some other things. Yeah, exactly, like earrings and I don't know what other. There's some other suggestions that we're saying. Yeah, a jar sleeve. Exactly. Yeah, there's a bunch of other different sizes that you can attach this to, and these pigments supposed to be for. Um, you know, additives for like doing nail polish or yeah, doing some other paint. Some, yeah, is it like mica powder? Yeah, yeah, it is. It's it pretty. Is mica it, powder? Yeah, it's like thin, like the. It, oh, the, it's fine dust. It's powder. fine dust. Yeah, yeah, so definitely be careful when using this stuff around. I think Lamar is gonna try to stock this, so we will mm -hmm. have. This we have in some the fluorescent shop. pigment already. Did you try using that stuff? The fluorescent? No, this is it's... glow in the dark. Right. Um, that's probably why she wants to stock it because we have fluorescent. I think we have two different types of fluorescents right. or pigments. Yeah. And uh, but no glow in the dark. Yeah, yet. Lamar's a fan of arts and crafts projects and like having stuff for young makers and mm -hmm. kids and students is really nice. So having that in stock, I think, makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I guess we'll go into the weeds uh, next week or whenever we release the project in terms of modeling this. Yeah, trying to use the cool. generative design, the lattice structures. Fusion 360. Fusion, specific, yeah. yeah. Maybe you should try Blender. <laughs> I tried Blender. Yeah, Pedro's learning. Pedro knows I couldn't. I couldn't do. He's a ninja. I couldn't do the radius of this. Hiya. <laughs> right at the first step, I'm like, all right, I need this to be 10, uh, 10 millimeter uh, radius for this. And then I couldn't figure out how to do that in Blender. <laughs> challenge to print something like this, to be honest. The um, setting up the the Vernoy structure would have been easier inside of Blender, but I couldn't even get past the first step of getting the diameter right. There's like little bin chucks. <laughs> oh yeah, that would be a good one. Little yeah, chucks. all these huh. ideas. <laughs> but I think the most useful wearable one is uh, the Hooder oh. Zippy Pull. The Hooder. Zipper. <laughs> Hooder. Hoodie. Come on. You can't make Holiday. it more brighter. Maybe take some. I don't know. It's the cameras. It's the cameras. Yeah. Okay. 
you like those right. special and powders. That is what we're prototyping. Yeah, cool. That's this week's prototypes. Next week will be uh, I think Soap Trope, and then some fun glow in the dark stuff. We got some other projects. All right, real quick. Um, question about adding a counterweight to the hood switch to prevent it from slipping away. Yeah, totally well, that, could do that. Yeah. Um, well, that's what the rubber feet are for. Mm -hmm. You can get a, let's see, maybe a, a piece of brass or something at the bottom. Hmm. Secure it down. Should but work. yeah, something. We haven't had any problems with it slipping that's away. another thing in terms you can do. Of... Um, you know, adding more like washers or something at the bottom somehow. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see a lot of... Uh, the bases for let's say like your soldering iron they have mm. like a metal plate that's yeah. been added it's literally just added to the plastic bit that way it keeps it weighed down mm -hmm. plenty of room in here to add some sort of weight um to counterbalance our heat set insert we used pennies you can use pennies dimes whatever you want that's money but you know what i mean washers is another one i think somebody used bbs before you use bbs uh, yeah, yeah so lots of different ideas there for you but uh we didn't weigh it down ourselves because uh, we didn't run into that yeah, issue. Yeah, we didn't run into that issue. Especially when you're on gra uh, grass, when you're on carpet. Mm -hmm. But even is... downstairs in the... Um... Yeah, these, these grippy feet work really well. It doesn't need to be heavy unless you're, like, you know, doing something. I mean, there's maybe the you're, weight. If you're drumming, if you're, like, an instrument, then, yeah, you probably want to weigh down. Yeah, I mean, but... the weight of all the components in there is... You know, it, it, this isn't light. Just <laughs> drill it into your floor. <laughs> you do that, too. <laughs> you can't move it. <laughs> Cool. But yeah, <laughs> grippy feet all the way, for sure. And then uh, Andy Calloway saying that, yep, Blender is not faint-hearted. Yeah, he's learning it. <laughs> this is coming from a Maya user, so... Yeah, I've, I've tried it, and I was like, nope. Where's my sketches? <laughs> <laughs> it right. does have the Maya command, so that's the only that's way cool. I'm able to navigate around there is by using that. Yeah. They're well, switching all my things. commands. Okay, cool. All right. I guess we'll some lights on. <laughs> yeah, please do. All right, let's go ahead and jump into this week's community makes. Nope, we got shop talk before Ooh, that. Shop talk. We got some fun things that we want to share. Um, some online STL generator oh, yeah. things that are really fun. Huge shout out to Andrew Sink who put who developed these. The first one I'm taking a look at is a low res. You go to lowpoly.3d.xyz, and you can upload STL models. In um, with this online tool, you can disseminate low polygon eyes, uh, different STLs. So I brought in this STL uh, from one of our D20 projects. There's a bunch of numbers floating around. So with the, uh, the little slider here, you can decimate, you can add the decimate percentage and just get a look at like, what does a high resolution model look like at a low resolution? It's pretty cool. Um, it's on GitHub. The source code is, is available. And uh, Andrew Sink's been doing a lot of fun stuff with this. So cool little online thing to play with. And you can, I think you can export the STL too. Um, of the ST, of the of the model, yeah, you can export your STL after you've decimated it. So if you don't want to use something like Mesh Mixer or Netfab or any of those other apps, you can do it on your browser, which is pretty fun. And the second one from Andrew Sink is this ASCII uh, STL to ASCII uh, fun generator tool. So again, it's online. It's a uh, Hosted through GitHub, so the link for this one. Peter, could you add the links? I'm looking for Andrew, these. Andrew, yeah, I don't, I never added them, sorry. Ah. I just have the video. Ah. Uh, it's uh, andrewsync.github.io slash stl2 ASCII generator. I've made a blog post about it. A lot of folks have been seeing it on the Twitters. I was supposed to re talk about this last week, but I kind of, we ran out of time. But this, this week I'm talking about it. This is the exact same model that I brought in from the D20. And just looking at the STL, orbiting it around, it's really, really cool to see your STLs rendered in nothing but ASCII text. It's very, very neat. Here's an Adafruit logo with some T-splines that I modeled in Fusion. And just cool to see it rotating there and the shadowing and everything. It looks really, really cool. You can create so many cool artworks in ASCII. It's pretty nuts. ASCII the world. You can really make out all sorts of shapes and now 3D geometry within your browser. Just don't use Safari. Because it's too slow. <laughs> but yeah, those are really, really cool. Shout out to Andrew Seek for these super cool STL tool, uh, gadgets and gizmos. I don't know if that's what I'm calling them. Gadgets and gizmos. Very, very cool. And that's uh, Shop Talk. Has anyone had fun uh, playing around with them? Let me know. It'd be fun to see. 
It took so long. It is case sensitive. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Uh, good suggestion on uh, uh, Depang's comment on the counterweight for the floor switch, anti-slip floor mat, then magnetic yeah. fixings glued underneath the mat That's to hold it in idea. place. Yeah, I never thought of that. Huh. Yeah, you can get those cheap magnet sheets. Mm -hmm. That's a really good idea. If you have a magnetic thing, oh, because it's magnet to magnet, so it'll mm -hmm. work. Yeah, that's a cool idea. Yeah. Close out some of these tabs. Cool. Let's shop talk. I don't have anything else for shop talk. All right, right? cool. Oh, I do have somewhat of a shop talk thingy. I got rid of the Lair Belairs. Huh? I used to have a thing for Lair Belairs. It's gone. Let me I'm post getting that back up. into Lair Belairs. Um, there is two of them that you can check out that I've released in the past two weeks now. Uh, the latest one is taking a look at the QT Pi Snap Fit case, just looking at it, analyzing some things I learned and a couple of tips. So I'm going to start doing that. I have a backlog list now. Uh, so I got a nice list of tutorials that I'll be doing uh, for 2022. Um, basically, just looking at all the products that were released over the year, going back to them, revisiting them, and doing a little kind of analysis over like, Oops. how did you mount the electronics? How is it parametric? What's the method uh, for making it? you know, scalable, and then uh, any tips that you learn. So following that recipe, um, it's a little bit different. These are not like super step-by-step. -step. They're more like, here's some generic tips that I did in this actual project, yeah. which folks seem to, to really like. I get a lot of comments where like, I like that you're actually showing us a real world example, not just like a demo thing. It's like a real thing. That's always the worst demo because it's not real. You, you, there's always these edge cases that pop right. up every single time. Because you're, you're, you're always, I'm always designing for the print, for the thing, exactly. for the actual physical print. A lot of the other ones could be other things, but yeah, so I'll keep it, uh, keep that style on. I will do some more step-by-step -step actual things if, if I get a lot of, um, I don't know, Request for some or something, feedback. yeah. Request, yeah, yeah. But for now, I think the easiest way is just to kind of talk through the thing, and uh, showcase some of the some of the tips. So that's uh, the latest on the Lair Belair front. More coming soon. And I posted the link to the playlist. So you can check out the latest one. Yeah, I Posted yeah. on Monday. I something like that. Monday, Tuesday. All right. I really appreciate everybody checking those out and dropping even even the small little comments. Like, okay, people, people this is a valuable it. thing. You know, the, these aren't like uh, videos that we're tasked to do. We just do them because we want to, and we're excited about what we've learned. So that's what's cool. It's definitely uh, keep it authentic. <laughs> yeah, a lot of it is for us. I'm very we down to earth. Like bookmarks. if things crash in Fusion, I'm like, I hate you, Fusion. <laughs> you know, like it's fine. It happens every day. It happens every day. Yeah. <laughs> All right, time for a community makes really cool, awesome, a current one for this week we're right in the middle of watching the last episode no of spoilers. boba fett ah, i don't know just... what's happening we didn't watch it we don't know well, we can't spoil anything spoil. yeah <laughs> just saying who did he choose this is from star wars it could be boba fett we don't know what is that cockpit in the back for who is that for <laughs> yeah so this is cool um this is the uh, mando's n1 naboo starfighter uh by thingiverse user rune caster he posted this up uh, Pedro took the model and split it in two so that he can print it without any support material. You can glue the two halves together since there's some flat surfaces to, uh, to put the glue on. And the seam actually goes well with the design. So it's actually kind of a nice method of, of printing something like this without any support material. Something that Pedro really likes to do is to take a model, split it, glue it later. It's really, really cool. And this is a fantastic model. From again, Rune Caster on Thingiverse. So let's take a look here on the overhead. Printed in some PLA, some glitter. No, oh, the glitter, shiny. Just shiny, shiny silk, uh, silver PLA. Lots of nice details. Suppose you would like the little vents and all like the uh, the engine thrusters and all that. The little Lots of uh, turrets and a nice smooth body. Nice little futuristic yeah. Where's the retro. Split? Chose the split. Oh, the split's right there. It goes it, right along where this uh, horizontal split actually yeah. is in the model. Which is great. You always want to split something wherever mm -hmm. that fits the design. Yeah, so I split it actually three times. One here. You here, can't even see here. the seam on the on the, uh, on the the thrusters here, but that is a part of the split. You can yeah. see again in the time lapse. And the whole reason I did this was because of the little tips that are printed here. Uh, when the printer gets to this section, the uh, heat, the little heat zone around there becomes so much that it starts melting it. So that's Do you why see I got that? that? Here? No, you won't see because it it's split up. 
And then oh. uh, the the reason why it, all that retraction there is a uh, nice time tip lapse, right? to the time lapse. Plus, there was like a, a giant amount of filament that got stuck between the extruder and the 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 fan nozzle or the there's exhaust for that so definitely always look over your printer to make sure there's not like a bunch of PLA all like stuck in there like mm-hmm. building up <laughs> right now the method of uh, getting these time lapses is the printer's head has to park mm-hmm. and the, the camera has a delay uh, timer on it for various reasons for exposure settings yeah uh, so well it's doing that's why there's stringy and the, the, and that's why it takes forever to print because it's parking and waiting for the camera to actually physically. And I had a, a and I had a glob of PLA right. that was so stuck inside there. of the uh, the fan shroud yeah. as well. So, so that's what happens. I was contributing to that. Plus, the silk filament tends to be a little bit more stringy. Mm-hmm. And I just posted a link to the remix of that. You, you can see right here. Just scroll down to the remixes. Or I probably should have made it as a make, right? Or no. Well, here's the thing with Thingiverse. <laughs> it's the same thing? No, it's broken. Oh, it's I have the link in the... Um, in the I just yeah, refreshed Discord. it. There we go. There was a remix. It said Whoa. one, and now it's a zero. Oh, so I have the link here. All right. If it works... Oh, 404. It's gone. <laughs> it literally deleted itself. It's, it's Thingiverse. <laughs> so post it as a make, or...? I'm gonna try posting as a link, but I split it up in three. This is why we can't post remakes because it just deletes it. <laughs> is it under makes now? Did they change it? <laughs> At any point, it's such a cool model that I had to print two of these because the kids were already yeah. fighting over it. <laughs> like that's mine. No, that's mine. <laughs> so um, make I'm sure that it's like to... a higher infill, just so that when the kids are playing with it, it doesn't break as easy. <laughs> okay. Because yeah, it's definitely a really cool model. Fly around the house with this. Uh, Everyone's gonna want one. <laughs> yeah. Download at your, um, what would you say? Hmm? At your discretion or something? Because you the site might break tomorrow. Oh, yeah. I think they posted it in different. Um... Dude, I literally saw one remix. Guys, you, you guys saw it live. It said one. I clicked on it, <laughs> then I refreshed it, and it was like gone. I know. It's telling it's me like, it's a, a 404 now. <laughs> last time, last week when I posted. Anyway, I'm gonna stop. We're gonna, we're gonna go. So, so shout out to, again, Thingiverse user Rune Caster. Posted up their awesome model of Mando's N1 Nebu Star Fighter. All right. All right. Next let's up. keep on going. Let's see. We have some other community makes. This was a really fun one. Very, very similar. Star Wars. Lolspot, the 3D printing manufacturer, open source 3D printers. They reached out to us and said, can we post this up? I was like, absolutely. Freaking literally. Uh, one of their employees printed out the Tuscan Raider staff that we designed. Nice. Very, very cool. It's taller than that. The thing. It's taller ladder. than the ladder. Uh, that's so cool. And it's today's Wednesday, so Woo-hoo. I'm going to be doing that. Very, very cool. <laughs> so you can download your own Tuscan Raider thing. You can get a little spot too. Why not? <laughs> All right, so shout out to Little Spot for, uh, for sharing that. That is the way. Oops. Grab all these links. Okay, we got another one here. This is a remix. Oh, boy. <laughs> Not not the the thing. It's just the, it's loading this website is 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 difficult. I should have them preloaded, huh? Well, it, it slows down the machine if I have all these tabs open. This is a remix by uh, Noradoc. Noradoc posted up the remix on Thingiverse of our Cutie Pie, uh, kind of key button switch. So they modified okay. it to have uh, some some ports opening for their stem cable, so they could plug in an OLED display. They added some extra uh, different switches in there as well. Here's what it looks something like on the inside. Still using the Cutie Pie and the Neo Key, the one by four. Very cool. So you can check out this remix on Thingy Birch. Shout out to Noradoc for posting that up. There's uh, also some chat here. Um, here's some changes um, to it. So you can read through that. But yeah, very, very cool to see folks creating their own setup. All right, and then the last one this week kind of a light week this week for makes, but hey, this is a really fun one. This is a Raspberry Pi. I'm okay with that, Joe, thank you. It's a really cool uh, make of the Raspberry Pi HQ camera case. So you can 3D print some parts to enclose your Raspberry Pi 4 and a HQ Pi camera module. So this is printed on, uh, printed with some really nice colors and 
It has a built-in tripod adapter. So if you're looking to uh, fumble around with your Pi and your HQ camera, 3D print these parts and uh, get a nice sturdy build for everything. So shout out to uh, the person for posing, for posing this up. Um, Reddick, I think it was. Wreck it. <laughs> Wreck it posted this up. Um, yeah, printed in black and green. Uh, Timori PLA. Hmm. You like the design? Thanks for making it available. Well, thank you for posting it. Oh. So very, very cool. Yeah, I like that green. Yeah, it's a nice uh, nice kind of camo green or something. It's like olive or something. Yeah, like an olive. Cool. Nice lens, too. All right. And that's going to do it for this week's commuting makes. Thank you, everybody, for posting up their makes. Really appreciate that. And shout out to... Uh, to Rune Caster for posting up their awesome 3D model. So cool. All right. So then, uh, because of the how easy it was to post process in the in the video in the um, in Boba Fett, you know how it has like two little streaks of the yellow. It was like, oh, I should probably post process that and just add that in there because <laughs> it's so simple. Just two little strokes of yellow. That's great. <laughs> hey, this just in. Woo, 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 woo. A new make alert. A new make alert. mate. Literally just now. A day ago, but I didn't get the email, so here it is. So, uh, Big Stinky Cat 3D on Prusa Printers posted up their make of the... Is that a custom font? The retro case for the Pi Portal. It is. So, the Pi Portal, we, we made this very adorable snap fit case that just... I love this case. It's It's got all the angles and fillets to make it retro. It looks like a little iMac, a little Mac Classic or something. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Um, so it looks like they're making a, a bit of a clock or something. It looks super, super cool. To, yeah. We made we made this for like every size of the pipe portal. So if you got yourself a pipe portal and you want to add this super cool little case to it, even Daryl puts one up. I don't know if I've shared that one before. No, I did. Cool. That's cool. Cool, 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 cool. So yeah, make your own retro case for your pipe portal. Nice. And that is this. Let me get a link to this. I was going to add it to that. Sometimes it's hard to get links. Here it is. Adding this to. Oh, why would they change the highlight color? You can't tell if you're highlighting something or not in the URL browser. <laughs> All right, taking notes here. Thanks everybody for, for those hanging out with us. Um, that's gonna do it for the show. We got about two minutes, so we're gonna wrap up the show. If anyone got any last minute comments, go ahead and drop those in the Discord. We'll hang out for a little bit, but. Let me run through it tonight. I hope to see you guys on the show Intel. It starts at 7.30 p.m. every Wednesday. We invite you folks this week. It's hosted by Mr. and Mrs. Lady Ada. Shortly after is Ask an Engineer at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. Full hour of Lamar and Phil. Uh, you can, they're gonna do Top Secret, uh, INMPI, check out what's new in the store, and of course, everything else that's going on in the background at the factory, so definitely tune in for that. Tomorrow, shows continue on with John Parks Workshop. Yep, JP's up tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern Time every Thursday. Tune in for some live building, CircuitPython Parsecs, future stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Synthesizers. Oh, yeah. Lots retro, of music. <laughs> Lots of retro. Phones. It's all on for retro yeah. and music, synths, all that. Yes. It's real good stuff. On Fridays, it's at 2 p.m. Pacific time or 5 p.m. Eastern time. You can tune in with Scott. He does a deep dive. And forthcoming, soon we'll have another special guest mm -hmm. on Fridays. Some sort of foamy, some sort of guy. Wrapping <laughs> 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 around to the week. And we got Desk of Lady Ada every Sunday from, I think it's like usually 7 to in the somewhere. Evenings. In the evening, so somewhere from like 7 p.m. to all the way to midnight. So mm -hmm. definitely tune in for that. All the awesome floppiness going on. We got some floppies coming in on I think next week. So we got to make some cases, That's right. and some hardware uh, cases, and all that cool stuff. So more floppies coming out. And I saw that they just ported or converted some of the old Mac stuff. Looks so awesome. Can't so wait. Check it out. Desk Lady at uh, every Sunday. And then on Mondays, we have the CircuitPython meeting. It happens at 2 p.m. Eastern time in the Discord server. You can also check it out in the archive posted in later after the show. Um, that was uh, cake. And the Tuesdays. There's cake. Uh, There's cake. Yeah, There's always cake. cake. Uh, every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Eastern time, you can get up to 50% off discounts on select products that JP picks. JP's product pick of the week. Last week, it was the awesome new Arcade Stemma board, Arcade QT Stemma board. 
I think Which, we sold through all of them. Like I was going to use that in the foot switch, but we were out of stock. I didn't know there was going to be more, so... Hey, at least the cutie pies in the uh, KB2040 yeah, yeah, zone. I, the, cutie, the arcade is good for arcade buttons because they have LEDs. This doesn't have LEDs, but it'd be That's cool true. if these That's did. True. So maybe in the future, hmm. these can have LEDs. Mm, That'd be really cool, huh? Yeah. LED foot switch? How did Elgato not do that? <laughs> I'm going to have to take that idea with the uh, uh, putting uh, a fan inside there so you're, yeah, we'll it, do it pulls off year. your foot. <laughs> pulls off your foot. Uh, <laughs> but tune in every Tuesday, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, 50% at discount. And tonight we have a discount code. So yeah, yeah, and you I get 10% off your yep. order if you order tonight. So t- stay tuned for that. We're wrapping around every Wednesday. We're here every Wednesday. Yeah, at all 11 a.m. stuff. Cool. Thanks, everybody, for joining in. We'll see you tonight on Ask and Den- on Show and Tell. That's it. And until then, remember to make a great day. Make a party parrot day. <laughs> Bye, see folks. See you tonight, folks. <laughs>